Hello and welcome everyone to the Dr. Janine Show. Today is a very special show. I'm so excited. Who knows what's going to happen today? This is live and I am answering your questions. It's my first time on TikTok, so hello to all my TikTok friends as well. And this is going to be great. So if you've got questions, certainly send them in. If you want to leave them in the questions and comments, I have my team behind the scenes that's helping to feed me all the questions. As they're coming in, we can talk about holidays stress and what we can do for the holidays today. We're also talking about things like sleep tips and some of the hacks that I have in my own life to help me with my stress and my busy lifestyle and things about exercise. So whatever, it doesn't matter what subject it is, whatever health questions you have, please send them in to me today. I would love to hear from you. We also have a bonus. So up at the end of the show, we will be entering you in a contest to win the Dr. Jane I mug. So all you have to do is ask some questions and we have one mug for each platform. So if you're coming in on TikTok and you've got questions, you will be entered in the draw. And of course, we'll connect with our winners afterwards by direct message on Facebook as well and on YouTube. So field in your questions, you have a chance to win one of the exclusive Dr. Jane I mugs, which I love and I use every single day that I'm here at the offices at the studios to be able to enjoy my coffees and my drinks and some special drinks I can even mix up today live one of the things that I like to go to in terms of and it's sort of a hack for you know digestion but also for weight loss is something that I use with apple cider vinegar so that will be coming up in today's episode as well so hello everyone if you don't know me I'm Dr. Janine Bowering naturopathic doctor and mother uh, as well, busy entrepreneur, and you know, always doing my best to research. So I do a ton of research in my spare time. Not really, that is my full-time job, is researching all about health, looking at you know some of the more trending topics and things that are happening, but also based on my experience after having seen patients for years and years, and really knowing you know what people are suffering through, and always you know doing the research but also knowing again going to mother nature how mother nature has solutions for us for so many different ailments that can creep up and certainly the more research that I do the more I learn that we really have to be in tune with mother nature and really be you know connected and I think we've become so disconnected from nature and that's why we have so many ailments so some really simple tips uh, are things that I share whether it's in the programs here and you know certainly when I speak on national television here in Canada as well this is something that I share and, and I try to enlighten and educate people about getting in touch and in tune with your own body because that's really important everything is connected and when we have a symptom let's say it's a skin symptom that's often related to what's going on at another level so internally with toxicity that can build up in our organ system so the good news is is that it's it's so easy to correct most of what's happening in our body. We just need to know how to first pay attention to what those symptoms are, what those symptoms are really telling us, and then do the things naturally that Mother Nature offers us. And of course, tweaking her formulations, that's something that I do as well in terms of formulating vitamins, but to be able to tweak what Mother Nature has given us and sometimes concentrate, you know, those great nutrients and to be able to heal ourselves from the inside out. And that's ultimately the best way to do it. So let's get right to it. So we had some questions and this is something that has come up a few times. What is a good morning routine? So of course, every Everybody has their own routine and it's either working for you or it's working against you. So one of the things that I always talk about is having a healthy sleep and waking up routine. And part of that is trying to wake up at the same time every single morning. 
and this is without an alarm clock. And the more that you're getting your circadian rhythms into sync with Mother Nature, you will wake up with the sunrise. And this is something that we, I think, underappreciate the power of the sun. And here on the Dr. Janine Show, we did a whole episode on the sun and, and why it's so important to be able to, you know, tune into that. But also it's important to wake up with the sun because the sun is when we're, you know, that's what is supposed to wake us up in the morning and all our hormones and the way that our brain functions is related to that sun coming up in the morning. So it's something that we definitely, you know, if whenever you can get the opportunity to see the sunrise and that should be every single morning, but do your best. And this is something that I do myself. I think we, I can pull up a picture of me and my sun routine in the morning. And, and in this picture, if you can believe it, this was on the front porch, but the temperature was probably about minus five degrees Celsius. And I do, and the sun was beautiful this morning. This was just last week. And so I do my best to expose as much of my, and you saw I was wearing a black t-shirt so that attracts more of the heat from the sun, which is fantastic. But I try, and I was pulling up my sleeves, you can see there, and, and expose your, especially your forehead and your eyes to that early morning sun. That's so important to be able to set all of your hormones for the rest of the day. And the more skin that you can expose, the better. And it really, is incredible how this affects your sleep at nighttime, believe it or not. So, and this is something that I've talked about in other episodes, but your sleep at night depends on how much of that morning sun you see first thing in the morning. So that's really important for you to be able to do that. And, you know, it's something that's really, really easy. Okay, so I have a few people that have come in on TikTok. So I'm going to go look at my screen over here. Hello, Rita. I think it's Rita Stopper. I see you. Hello, Curly Cameron. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in. It's my first live TikTok, so I appreciate all your support. And if you've got great questions, I would love to hear from you. Also, Trey Bohr, hello. And yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> this is so fun for me. And I asked this so funny because, of course, all, all our kids are on TikTok. And, and I asked, hey, hey, guys, how do I go? <laughs> like, mom has to go live on TikTok on Monday. What do I do? Oh, mom, you'll figure it out. It's so easy. You just click the button. So yeah, I figured it out. Out and you know I've got my team of helpers here at the Dr. Janine show that are that are helping me along but yeah I'd love to hear from you if you are hello oh thank you you are brilliant thank you so much <laughs> that is a great compliment and I love to share sort of it's a joke at the house like my nerdiness because um, it's something that I do I do a lot of research about health and giving you the right information and that's what you know, when sometimes you see my TikToks or you see my presentations, whether it's on national television here in Canada or maybe it's, you know, on your streaming in on YouTube and on Facebook, it's nice to see all of you. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Marie. Thank you for tuning in. So, yeah, and I, I do all of that geekiness, all that nerdiness to, to really, you know, know just because something is talked about in the news or on blogs and websites and people trying to sell you something doesn't necessarily mean that it has the efficacy and that it's in tune with mother nature and this is you know where I find there's this great divide between what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to do is actually quite simple in terms of being in tune with mother nature but you know there is there's a lot of business in between what we're supposed to do and and you know what we're told that we're supposed to do so I I do all of that research to make sure that we are always in line with mother nature and doing things as natural as possible and you know people have just been I think um, sort of sidelined with the amount of information and sometimes you're just sold something that is probably even though it's natural or deemed natural it's just not necessarily the best thing for your health. So that's why I'm here and that's why I share. And of course, anything that I talk about is something that I do myself and that I've tested and it's, you know, in terms of what's worked personally for me. And I can only, I think, be an expert in what I've actually tried either with my family or with my own body to give you that expertise because otherwise it would it would not be true and true to who I am as a person. So that's a little bit about, you know, where I'm coming from, but that's why I try to give the very best knowledge and, and information that I can to all of you. Hello. Okay, we've got questions on TikTok. Let me see. You're... It, 
advice really helped me when I was sick. I'm so glad to hear that and, and thank you for sharing because a lot of people often when you're not feeling well you may you may think that you just can't get better or maybe get you know sort of the wrong information sometimes or you have to resort to taking things that you don't want to. So I'm so happy that you are feeling better and yeah thank you for sharing that. It, 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 you know, it means so much to me to, to hear that you um, are feeling better and that something that I said, you know, sparked you to maybe do something or change something in your own life um, to help you to feel better. So that's fantastic. Hello. What, okay, so a question from Pink Crazy. Dr. Janine, what should we do for an overactive bladder, especially when sleeping? So huge question. So we actually have a YouTube video on this and you know, nocturia getting up at night to have to urinate. My number one tip, believe it or not, I actually learned this not in medical school, I learned this from a patient of mine years back when I was a young naturopath and, and you know I hadn't been in practice for too long and she had been to every specialist and then did her own research and then finally she came across the information that you need to fully empty your bladder before you go to bed. And that sounds, okay, that's too simple. But often, and this was the tip, and it's something that I've experimented with and, and absolutely makes a difference. So as soon as, sorry, I have to get a bit graphic here, but I'm glad you're tuning in. So as soon as you empty your bladder, what you want to do is you don't get up and go about your business and go to brush your teeth and do the, your, the next thing in your nighttime routine before bed. You wait and then you try to empty your bladder a little bit more and it's incredible the amount of urine that's still in your bladder that when you thought you were done so that goes a long way for you being able to get through the night and not having to get up in the middle of the night to urinate so try that also sort of certainly cutting back how much you're drinking before bedtime so if you know that this is an issue for you stop drinking your fluids and and make sure so this is the thing earlier in the day you have to make sure you're getting enough of your fluids in you just are going to cut yourself off so maybe that's you know an experiment with this maybe this is 6 p.m. maybe this is 7 p.m. is your cutoff time that you shouldn't be drinking any more fluids so that you have that restful night's sleep so try these things certainly there's herbal medicines that help with this as well in terms of doing a kidney detox is something that's usually indicated um, and there are some of my favorite herbs like parsley is a great one it's a diuretic and and these are things that you do a few times a year. If you've heard me talk about detoxification before, you know that I usually suggest that you're detoxing at least four times a year. And to be able to do that, you know, is a great way to clean out not just your kidneys, but your liver, your brain, your blood, your lymphatic system, all of, you know, your different organs. You want to do that four times a year. And that's something that I do as well so we will leave some links to you know some great supplements in in the description because this will live you know online after after the show on YouTube anyway so I don't know I'm not sure how it works on TikTok if it's gonna still be there but yeah anybody who's chiming in it's great to see you hello we have a question from Jill oh this is a good one so if you cannot get outside and get unfiltered sun does it help to sit by the window and watch the sun from there Merry Christmas and God bless in 2021 thank you so much Jill thank you for your question so here's the thing with sitting behind a window is that it blocks all of the infrared the far infrared so all of those healing rays of the sun are pretty much blocked and it only lets through mostly the blue light spectrum so when we talk about the sun the sun is called full spectrum light so it has all of you know the different wavelengths in the sunlight are very healing to our cells when we're behind glass behind a window most of the blue is coming in that's okay first thing in the morning because it helps to wake us up but you have to be one-on-one -on -one with the sun. You can't have anything between you and the sun to get the full benefit of the sun's rays. So yeah, the window doesn't really work and that's why you saw the picture of me on the front porch. Uh, that is, you know, full exposure. Now if it's a cloudy day, you still do this and this is why people would think, well, yeah, the sun, but my, it's so funny because I do this with my younger two, two boys and, you know, I, and they're so smart. I mean, they know, kids know. Kids are in tune with nature more, I think, 
than we are as adults. And and they say, yeah, mommy, the sun is still there. The clouds are covering it up, but the sun is there, still there. The sun is always there during the day. So yes, you still want to do this even on a cloudy day, even if it's a few seconds. And researchers actually tried to time. So they tried to document the amount of time that it took for that activation of the sun light going into the eye and having that you know effect on our brain and our nervous system they couldn't even document it it was faster than the speed of light so it doesn't take long I mean certainly the longer up to 20 minutes is what's recommended I don't have that kind of time right now anyway in my daily life and getting the kids to school and everything I simply don't have that time in the morning but I you know if even if it's 30 seconds up to two minutes five minutes and I can take those few minutes in the sun in the early morning hours once the sun has come up with the sunrise. It's, I'm telling you, it's the best thing that will help you. So thank you, Jill. Fantastic question. Yeah, you got it's got to be you and the sun, one-on-one, -on -one, nothing in between. And no sunglasses, too. That's another thing. You don't want to be blocking. You want to, if you can, blink a lot when you're looking at that sun in the morning. And if you need to, if it's too, too bright for you, depending on how soon you can get up in the morning to see the sun, maybe, you know, starting to rise a little bit before 10 a.m. Is, is ideal but if you if you need to close your eyes like you saw me in the picture I, my eyes were closed and one thing you can do is you can sort of rock your head back and forth with your eyes closed and get that sun on your eyeballs but your eyelid is now protecting um, the, your, your eyes from that sun so yeah it's a great thing you're gonna see how that affects your sleep and you're totally gonna love it more questions on TikTok hello so, my sugar levels, aha, uh -huh. so sugar levels in the morning are not good, so what should I do, if I'm understanding, what should I do first thing in the morning and before going to bed, okay, your blood glucose levels, if I'm understanding you correctly, is your blood glucose is really high in the morning and you're not sure, you know, what to do as a morning routine. So as much as, you know, and I'm not giving advice, I'm just, you know, as a general rule of thumb, if you have difficulty with stabilizing your blood glucose levels, you have to watch your carbohydrates. So we know this. You are most in insulin sensitive in the morning. So in the morning is not the time to be having a sugary cereal, lots of sugar, you know, on your oatmeal. If you're drinking coffee or tea to be adding sugar in there, you don't want to do this. You don't want to have a high carb breakfast when you are the most insulin sensitive. So you want to have healthy fats and proteins for breakfast. This will help to keep you full as well. This is part of that whole leptin thing. And so check out my show on leptin resistance on YouTube. Really important that you get your leptin under control. At bedtime, what you want to do is you have to stop eating. At So here living in Canada, you stop eating at 6 p.m., maybe 7 p.m. In the summer months, you can get... Uh, maybe a little bit away with eating a little bit later, maybe max 8 p.m., but you, you typically will go to bed a little bit later in the summer because we have more light in our evenings. Um, but yeah, you want to stop eating at least three to four hours before bed because this then offsets your leptin. Your leptin is important for being able to regulate your blood glucose and not have your body in a high cortisol situation, which is higher stress. As soon as your body is under stress, then your body can no longer read the leptin and all your hormones get messed up so to make a long story short yes in the morning you've got to watch your carbohydrates at night you have to stop eating at least three to four hours before bed super important you can do some cold therapy as well so cold therapy will help with your leptin resistance and that means and this is what I do so three usually three nights a week I will put ice packs on my stomach <laughs> sounds crazy and it's not comfortable at the beginning and I yeah you can do it you know if you need to wrap your ice pack in a towel first to, to place that on you and not put it on your bare skin but I'm I'm I don't know I, that's my personality I'm <laughs> I'm hardcore and if I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it right so I put that ice pack flat like right on my skin and it's tough the first few minutes um, is tough but then your body gets used to it and I leave it there for 40 minutes so I'll set my timer on my on my iPhone phone and for 40 minutes so I just you know watch a movie or whatever or watch YouTube and and um, do more of my geekiness and my learning or watch a movie whatever and and I with the ice pack but that then is helping with your
your leptin sensitivity, and this helps all of your hormones, helps with weight loss, and you know it's a great thing. So check out my show on leptin resistance for and and sugar addiction as well, because if you love sugar and you're addicted to sugar, then you want to check that out. So hello, okay, great. More questions from Bonnie. I don't know where to go. TikTok. Here we go. Bonnie, is nutritional yeast the best source of B vitamins? It is a good source of B vitamins, absolutely, and it's whole food, which is good. Now the problem if you have, and this is always sort of like a catch-22 for me, is that if someone has candida issues, so if you have yeast sensitivity or you, you know, have difficulty getting over sugars and things and you crave a lot of sugars, then that's the whole leptin problem. So check out the show, Bonnie, on leptin resistance. You've got to get over that whole, you know, carbohydrate problem with and, and get your leptin signaling better so that you don't crave the carbohydrates anymore. But if you're a healthy person, your leptin's working fine, you're not overweight, um, some of the nutritional yeast is not a bad idea. It does have those active B vitamins that your body will absorb. So a great thing you can add. I know um, a lot of you like to use nutritional yeast in different recipes and things. And yeah, it's, it's a great way to get some B vitamins. And again, it's whole food because as you know, probably Bonnie, you probably know that I'm against synthetic vitamins. And this is where, you know, I had a ton of questions on TikTok. So if you're coming in, hello everyone on TikTok. It's, uh, yes, hello, nice to see you. I see Priya, I see Selvral, it's hard for me to read from here, but yes, hello, uh, hi everyone. Great that you've joined in. So I had a ton of questions on TikTok about, you know, what is the best type of vitamin? And it's always, my answer is don't take synthetic vitamins. And this is the thing, people simply don't know. You look at your vitamin bottle and you read the ingredients and it looks like it's natural and it's not. So specific, you know, questions about, and people will start sending me on, on TikTok, they start sending me the list of of, you know, what's in their vitamins. And I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Because they're all synthetic. They contain a ton of fillers and that's a whole other show. So that's a show that we'll have coming up here on TikTok and also on YouTube and, and on Facebook as well, because I'm gonna share, you know, what things to look for. And we'll take some synthetic vitamin bottles and I'll show you um, the things to look for and the things to avoid, in my opinion. I mean, I've been in this uh, world of natural medicine and getting away from synthetic vitamins you know this is something that I did years back and have never been better because it really made me open up my eyes as to what's happening in the vitamin industry and why it's so important that we protect ourselves from those toxic um, you know synthetic vitamins okay so more questions we have hello um, we should do a video on the diet for anyone who has type 2 diabetes. Yes, and is it curable? In my opinion, yes it is. So type 2 diabetics, and I know there are a lot of you are following me on TikTok. So in my opinion, and this is my opinion, I believe it is completely reversible. So check out my show if you've not yet seen it on leptin resistance. This is where you have to start and, you know, depending on where you live. So this is important as well that the closer you live to the equator and if you're watching from the equator god bless you you're so lucky because as we know we're in a pandemic nobody's traveling and i would quite likely be there on a vacation and i've missed a couple of them um, because we haven't been able to travel but yeah that's why everybody feels better when you're closer to the equator you're able to use that sun's energy and you're in tune with nature and out on the beach and grounding and all these things that i talk about which are so healthy so if you're on the equator that's so good but there's things that you have to tweak as well but um, we tend to find that diabetes is the higher incidence happens the further you are from the equator and there are physiological reasons for that getting that leptin under control doing the cold therapy getting that early morning sunshine in your eyes super super important these are all the makings of my my next book that I'm working on so my third book if you know you have my books from before the healthy millionaire series i'm working on my third book now i'm super excited because i've done a ton of research on this whole thing uh, about circadian rhythms and getting in tune with nature again and you know i've just learned so much and it's changed my own life and my own energy levels and my own health and you know i know it will help so many more people once that book comes out so that's due to come out sometime next year and i'm super excited about it so stay tuned for that but yes we will definitely 
definitely do a show on type 2 diabetes. I have, you know, my producers behind the scenes here. We are taking notes and we have all your requests um, for future shows. Uh, we have a show coming up on libido because that was a question that came up last week on the Dr. Janine show. So that will be coming up and we'll definitely enlighten you as to how to improve your libido and also some natural beauty hacks I will be sharing as well. So I'm super excited about that. Shout outs. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Stephanie. Thank you for joining in. I'm so excited that you're here. This is fun. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine Baring, naturopathic doctor, medical researcher. I'm an author as well. I'm a busy mom, an entrepreneur, and, you know, talk everything health and wealth and, you know, how, how to get healthier and wealthier and how to do that. So if you've got questions, I would love to hear from you. Um, and if you're here on TikTok for the first time live, hello, everyone. Um, sorry, I can't look directly at you because I have to look at my main cameras. But yeah, thanks for thanks for being here, everyone. It's great to have you here. I love the fact that you're here. So hello, Gio joined. And uh, another question on TikTok. I take prescription D2. 50,000 units once a week. Can that cause weight gain? Yes, it can. Now here's the thing, vitamin D2 is usually what is prescribed by a practitioner, by a medical doctor, and vitamin D2 is not the best form of absorbable vitamin D. So our skin actually makes vitamin D3 from the sun. And you know, years back, probably I'm going to say about seven to eight years ago, I actually did a whole video about gaining weight. Are your vitamins making or is your multivitamin making you gain weight? Well, yeah, because it's synthetically made and, and vitamin D2 is synthetically made. And anytime you put a synthetic chemical, even though it's a natural vitamin, uh, it's not so natural in the way that it's made. When you put that into your body, your body doesn't always know how to utilize these vitamins. So that's why I always recommend number one is sun exposure. When you can't get sun exposure, you want to take vitamin D3. So D3 is the best type of vitamin and you have to make sure that it's readily absorbed. So that is usually meaning that I like, you know, MCTs, medium chain triglycerides helps to absorb our vitamin D and you know in that pure formulation so this is something we can help you with in links so if you're going to check us out I know you're in on TikTok as with your question but check out our YouTube channel which is if you click in in my you know profile in my bio you can click right on the icon there you'll get to my Instagram but also my YouTube link is there check out you know when I talk about vitamin D we did a whole show on vitamin D and the right type to take and we have links in that show is to the supplements you know that I usually recommend so you can check that out so that's a fantastic question and weight gain is a real thing from taking not just vitamins but synthetic vitamins especially if they are you know not the type that your body can absorb really well and this is why it's all about the absorption of vitamins that makes all the difference for your health so great question. Hello. Uh, okay, Mel Bree. Hello, welcome in on TikTok. Hi, so great to see all of you. Um, I have trouble with kidney stones. I've been told that it can cause kidney stone formation. Okay, so I, I'm wondering if you were referring to vitamin D with kidney stones. That's a possibility. Vitamin C can also be related to kidney stones. So yeah, so for kidney stones, if you're prone to them, you want to drink a lot more water. This is potentially another show that we could do on, on kidney health and kidney stones. You want to do detox at least four times a year. And this is with herbal medicines um, that is a full body detox and that's important for keeping you your kidneys healthy as well. But yeah, you have to watch your calcium metabolism and your vitamin K. And so kidney stones has a lot to do with calcium, magnesium. You need to, if you're taking calcium, you have to make sure you're make, taking magnesium. And this is one of the questions that came in, you know, before we came live was, you know, how and when do you take your vitamins? So I'm going to tell you how I take my vitamins in just a second um, but yeah there's a certain way of taking the right vitamins and again you when you're taking any type of vitamin you want to make sure that it's whole food vitamins whole food vitamins is what you're looking for meaning that your body knows how to absorb them they're from mother nature and con usually concentrated so that you're getting the right amount for your daily routine but you want to make sure that you're maximizing the absorption and they're not going to work against you and that's a you know great you know, example, if take too much vitamin C, take too much of the wrong calcium, you can cause yourself to have 
more of a problem. You can get kidney stones. And if you're lacking in vitamin K2, then, you know, then you're, you're getting a concentration of the calcium if you're not drinking enough water. So yeah, be, be sure to do things in the right way. And that's why I love, you know, thank you for, for coming in. And if, you know, whenever you've got questions, I know a lot of you here from TikTok, if you've got questions, always send the messages. I mean, I'm answering all those questions. I can't give medical advice, obviously, but, you know, I can give general information as to sort of how to do things the right way, and that's what I'm all about. So we can maximize, you know, that you're feeling better so that you can do your very best. Hello. Hello on TikTok. We have, okay, vitamin D3. So your question was about vitamin D3 and the kidney stones. So yes, um, great question. So yeah, you want it you, with your vitamin D, you want to be, so let me answer my question. Okay. How do I take my vitamins? So this is, this is, I think will answer a lot of your questions. So there is a periodicity, and the more that I learn about circadian rhythms, and I've said for, for years, um, that you want to take your magnesium in the morning. Yes, in the morning. And I know that you've heard the complete opposite. You've heard to say to take your magnesium at bedtime because it helps with sleep. Well, I see it the other way. Magnesium actually helps with the metabolism of your carbs, your fats, and your proteins. So when are you eating most of your calories, your carbs, fats, and proteins? It's not when you're sleeping. You're eating it during the day. So let's maximize your metabolism. Let's take the magnesium in the morning. It helps to relax your nervous system. And yes, even by taking it in the morning, it will still have a great impact on your sleep. Now what's more important during sleep is to take your calcium closer to bedtime. And remember always a whole food calcium closer to bedtime. And what the calcium does is it ensures that it's going into your bones and this happens better when you secrete your growth hormone. Your growth hormone is secreted when you're sleeping. And that's when the maximum secretion is happening of and utilization of your growth hormone. Guess what? Growth hormone is a natural fat burner. So we're supposed to, whatever calories we maybe overate during the day, we're supposed to burn off in our sleep. Yes, burning calories while we sleep. Hello, this is fantastic, right? And this is what our physiology and this is what the research tells us. Yet so many of us are doing it the wrong way. So magnesium in the morning, MM, that's how you remember it. I also take my vitamin D3 in in the morning and I take my calcium closer to bedtime. Now in the morning I also, you know, to maximize the absorption, I take my fish oil, so my DHA, because I live in Canada, it's cold here, and for those of you that are Canadian, hello, I'd love to hear from you. Just put in TikTok, I want to see the little Canadian flag. If you can find it, put it there as the emoji. I want to see how many Canadians are here and, and tuning in for my first live TikTok. This is, <laughs> hi guys, <laughs> it's so exciting. I'm sorry I can't look at your camera all the time, um, but hello. Hello, I want to see some Canadian flags because don't forget if you ask a question as well you have the opportunity today so we're collecting all this data we have the opportunity to win and we will send you one of my exclusive Dr. J9 mugs for free completely I just want to hear a question and if you put a Canadian flag maybe that's gonna up your up your chances um, but no matter where you're from put in your flag from your country I'd love to hear you know where you're all from so yeah, in the morning, okay, again, I take my magnesium, I take my vitamin D3, and I take my fish oil, my DHA, so higher in, in the DHA, which our bodies do not produce, that's a whole other show, I could talk about DHA for an hour or two. Um, so, so that's something that we'll talk about in the future. But also then I take my calcium close to bedtime. It helps with sleep. It helps with having that, you know, great deep REM sleep and it affects dreaming and the ability to have nice vivid and, you know, sometimes very insightful dreams. I get a lot of information, you know, if you believe in, in energy and what is happening in the universe, um, I get a lot of very insightful dreams and intuitions in my sleep. And when I'm in that dark, deep, deep REM sleep, and I find that the calcium and taking it at bedtime really helps. And vitamin K2 is important as well with the vitamin D. So I actually take a gummy and the gummy has the K2 and the whole food calcium. Again, your calcium has to be in an absorbable form. So coral calcium, that gummy I take at bedtime, and you know my other ones I'm taking in the morning. And I take other things like zinc in the morning to help with the absorption and you know other nutrients depending on the season. And, and you know if I'm doing a detox, I do that four times a year as well. So you know I'm sure you've got more tons of questions, but you know keep fielding them in. We do this live, so we're here. This is our first live TikTok, but every Monday at noon Eastern. 
Eastern Standard Time. We are here live on the Dr. Janine Show and we'll continue um, to do the TikTok now as well because this is so much fun and I love the interaction and all your questions. So hello, I see some Canadian flags. Hello everybody. Um, nice to see you. Thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks guys. All the fellow Canadians I see and an American. Hello Lisa from the US. Great to have you here. If you've got questions, make sure you put them in because yeah, you may have the opportunity to win one of the Dr. Jane Ann So hello. Hello. Shout outs. I also on YouTube and Facebook, I have Shiva. Hello. And Anyar. Hello. And a question came in. So question from Catherine to hi, Dr. J. What can I do for sluggish adrenals and thyroid? This is a big one. So this is a loaded question. So the first place to start is in the first place uh, we know that stress and cortisol levels in our adrenals so for anybody who doesn't know what the adrenals the adrenals are little glands that sit on top of our kidneys and i don't know hmm, give me one second i have lucy here so if anybody knows i'm gonna try to i'm gonna come off camera for a second i don't know if i have adrenal glands that i can actually show you i'm gonna pull out lucy's heart and take her apart i'm so sorry guys and do I have adrenals? I do, but guess what? Okay, guys. Ugh. Lucy's head's coming off. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna show you what the adrenals are because I think it's important. Oh, I didn't even have to do that. My, <laughs> my camera crew was, <laughs> was really good. Okay, this is the adrenal gland. Do we see it? Yes. So it sits on top of the kidneys. This is the kidneys. And the adrenals are where our cortisol, our stress hormones, are pumped out. And the problem does not start here. The problem starts up in the head, and I took Lucy's head off and her brain fell out, but the problem starts up in the brain, and believe it or not, in the eyes. So when I talked earlier at the beginning of today's show, it's important to get that early morning sunshine, to set up our whole circadian rhythm, to set up our brain and our entire nervous system, to make sure that that proper cascade of what's happening with our all of our hormones in our body is happening appropriately. So that's important, but yes, stress doesn't help us. And whenever we have stress and high cortisol, it causes the leptin resistance. That then shuts down and has wreaks havoc on our thyroid. So for your question, talking about adrenals and thyroid, it starts way higher up. It doesn't start at the thyroid. It doesn't start at the adrenals. It starts high up in the brain. Has to do with that light coming into our eyes, that reaction to the sun, also grounding. So here's another whole thing. We're going to do a show on this. Um, we spoke with a few... I'm going to say a couple months ago now, Dr. Sinatra. So Dr. Stephen Sinatra is a world-renowned cardiologist, and he is also one of the co-authors of the book called Earthing. And it's all about grounding and getting grounded. And he did, you know, some some pretty <laughs> great studies about why it's so important that we are connecting with the Earth, bringing those electrons up from the earth and to really settle our energy and to have those healing properties of those electrons and connecting with the Schumann resonance of, of the earth. Um, so really important information. So yeah, so important to ground, important to see that early morning sunshine. Yes, there are things that and nutrients that are super important for supporting our thyroid gland, absolutely. So, you know, certain foods that will help with that. And I think um, we're gonna be taking notes here. I'm waving to my people behind the scenes. We're going to do a thyroid show too, please. Yes. Um, a whole show all on thyroid because whether it's low and I got the big thumbs up, we're going to do a thyroid show. Um, so yeah, so make sure you're always tuning in. Make sure you're following me on Instagram as well because here's where we give a lot of like really good sort of bullet points about organ systems and circadian rhythms and things you can, if you wake up at a certain time during the night, what that may indicate in terms of your health and which organ system it's, it, I, I, to be honest, I just find this stuff so interesting myself that that's why I share anything that I am like, yeah, the people around the office here, they they know my nerdiness. They, they laugh at me all the time, but now they're used to it because they're like, guess what I found out today? Oh my God. And like, so that's just me. And I think what it, it, it excites me often will, it, I think is good information for a lot of people. So that's that's who I am. That's what I do. And either you love it or you don't. And, and I, you know, it's so great to have you here and that you're tuning in because there's something that I must be saying that I think you might be liking or maybe learning something and the best thing you can do is share 
So okay. if there's something that, you know, that you're learning today, I think I approach health in a little bit different way and I share the information a little bit different, um, differently and I, I try to make things simple so that you understand and it's not a lot of wordiness and, you know, big medical terms. I try to really make it easy for everyone to understand. So uh, I know a lot of you appreciate that. So please, you know, share, share the fact that I'm here and if, you know, share the video, I don't know if you can do it on TikTok, if you can share live or whatever you can do to let other people know that I'm here and I'm sharing and you know when you've got questions I'm here for you I'm here to answer because there's a lot of confusion out there whether it's supplements whether it's you know what to do naturally for your body how to heal and how to do it um, from a natural perspective so I appreciate all of you that are here hello question from Ross is peanut butter healthy this is a great question so yes and no. It depends on the type of peanuts. It depends on if it's organic. So I always buy an organic peanut butter that's just peanuts. And this, yeah, so there is a lot of news around peanuts. Certainly if it's conventionally grown, if it's not organic, that it can, if it's not fresh, there could be aflatoxins and aflatoxins are like a fungus, not so good if you've got candida and other issues with your microbiome. Um, so it's a loaded question. I like peanut butter. I don't eat it every day, but if it's organic and it's fresh and you keep it, it's the type that you have to stir and you have to keep it in the fridge, then, then I think, you know, it's, it's uh, certainly if you're not sensitive to it, this is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I, I like peanut butter. I think it has, you know, some good fats and it helps to satiate you so you're not, you know, hungry all the time. And, you know, it's, I, I love it. And we have recipes too. So make sure you check out if you're following me, I hope you're following me on Instagram where I share recipes, um, even on TikTok for protein balls and things that we do. Often I'll put um, peanut butter in a shake as well. So yeah, I, I love peanut butter. That's my own personal opinion. I think if it's organic, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, hello, question from Renika. How do you regain weight after a change of diet? Great question. So yes, I actually did a TikTok on gaining weight. And yes, you have to eat more, but you want to eat more frequently. So for people that are trying to lose weight, we don't want to be snacking. If Now it's the opposite. If you're trying to gain weight, you kind of have to be eating a lot and, and doing that steadily and to be able, and having calorie dense food. So sometimes, you know, people that are trying to gain weight, they may be eating a lot, but you're not getting the nutrient density, and I said calorie dense, yes, but nutrient density as well in those foods. So you want to have root and depending on where you live as well. So I don't know enough information from you because this changes. So the equatorial diet, if you live close to the equator, is a little bit different usually higher in carbohydrates and if you live further away from the equator there my answer would be a little bit different and you know more seafood but you want to nourish your body and this can be a leptin problem as well so let's say that you know maybe people with hyperthyroid so a really fast thyroid gland that you are burning through your calories you know really quickly and you can't keep weight on this is actually a leptin problem as well so it can go both ways so check out my show on leptin resistance to help you there um, because this can help you to gain the weight as well to, to get your thyroid working properly. So I hope I answered that question. Renika, thank you. Hello, um, boy Den, hello on TikTok. Could you please give a chia pudding recipe? Chia pudding recipe, yes, we will do that, absolutely. So we're taking notes, and I, if you have been following me on TikTok, hello guys on TikTok, sorry, I can't always look at your camera. Um, but on TikTok, yes, I, you've seen that I've shared a lot of recipes, but if you want a chia recipe, then yeah, we'll definitely do that. Now chia for me is, um, sometimes the, the consistency and it's got to have the right sweetness, but you know that I don't use a lot of sugar myself. Or if you don't know that, then now you know because of the whole leptin thing and, and with the hormones, we have to watch having too much sugar. But if there's a natural way to make it delicious, and we know that chia seeds are loaded with some you know fiber, which is fantastic, but also some of the omegas, which we don't really break down so well and we don't utilize. That's why I always say a DHA supplement, so a fish oil supplement, if you're not eating a lot of fish, which 
which also I don't recommend having too much fish because of toxicity levels. So yeah, you can't get a lot of your omega-3s from chia that are readily absorbed in your body, especially the DHA. So that's why going with a DHA supplement. But yes, we will do that recipe. Thank you for that. That's you know a great, great thing that we're going to work on. Hello on TikTok. Um, what essential oils do you recommend? Okay, for keeping the immune system strong over the holidays. Okay, so this came in and on TikTok. So this is one of my favorite essential oil blends and it's called Thieves. And Thieves is a blend of different essential oils and it, you can get it really from any brand but it is beautiful. And the whole story, if you don't know it, um, behind Thieves is that during one of the plagues, I don't know if it was the 1918 Spanish flu, one of the plagues anyways, sorry, I, you can Google it after um, or check it out on DuckDuckGo <laughs> um, as your search engine, that you know, if you wanna check this out, just look up Thieves Essential Oils and you'll see the story behind it. So basically the, and why it's called Thieves is that, you know, unfortunately so many people died because of the plague um, because I guess it was a virus so I think we can re relate to what you know is happening these days maybe maybe not um, and the you know a lot of people died so the the thieves so there were a group of robbers thieves that that went to loot all of the people that had perished from from the pandemic um, at that time and so what they would do is they would get their uh, scarves or handkerchiefs and load it with this blend of these essential oils that are in the thieves and they would be smelling that and then they would be able to go and rob everybody and not get sick. So that's the story behind the thieves essential oil. So I love it. I will put it in the air and the atomizers or whatever you call those things that put the, you know, the, the, the essential oils into the air as well as um, if you have you know a sore ear you put a couple drops behind your ear you can put a couple drops under your nose just don't get it in your eyes because it's very strong it has cinnamon in it uh, if you have a sore throat you can use the thieves oil right on you know the outside of your glands and i i can teach you know this is another video that we could do is um, the lymphatic drainage um, so i'll show you how to we're almost running out of time for today so thanks for everybody for tuning in um, but for the lymphatic drainage massage I show you how to do that if you're sick especially have an ear infection throat infection um, which is a great way but I use the thieves as well externally and you smell that and just you know smelling that is amazing when you're not feeling well it helps to drain everything uh, but also helps to kill those germs which I think is of utmost importance uh, especially in these days when we're wanting to, pro to protect ourselves and and to stay healthy so thank you that was a great question okay another question Ha, question from Tessa. How do you do earthing in the winter? Ha, it's cold right now in Toronto, so obviously you can't put your foot on the snow. Is there an alternative? Fantastic question. So yes, yes, uh, we know that it's cold and certainly you can work your way up to going. So I've done it with my husband out on the, f and people, the neighbors thought we were crazy going out on the snow, <laughs> on the grass in the front. Um, with bare feet, it is possible, but one of the hacks that you can do is to put on some wool socks and just you do that so that puts a bit of a buffer you'll still get the effect of the grounding from the earth with your wool socks on but you can you can do that definitely now the other way to ground if you have a stone fireplace if you touch that you can ground that way if you have a basement in your home that's poured concrete you can stand on your on your concrete floor there's something that I purchase you can purchase grounding mats um, that you can use uh, as well and that's plugged into the ground of your and that's you know that would be the last case always whenever you can do something naturally outside on the earth is the best way to ground um, dr. Sinatra in our previous episode which we're gonna have him on again to talk about grounding and different ways to do it but he had suggested every time you touch your kitchen sink your kitchen sink faucet is usually grounded as well so that would be another way but definitely if you can yeah if you can get out even if it's snowy even if it's just it doesn't take long with the, those electrons coming into the body certainly up to 20 minutes is what's recommended but 
even a few minutes, you will feel that, you know, instant rush of good energy to set you up for your day. And again, do this in the morning. Looking at the sunrise is the best thing that you can do. So thank you. Great question. Um, future show idea from Lindsay. Yes, can you talk about what to do to start a bedtime routine? Yes, that's something definitely a great show all about how to get that good night's sleep and you know setting up your sleep hygiene. So we did do a show, Lindsay, on sleep where we talked a little bit about sleep hygiene and what happens you know if you do wake up in the night, what you should do. So make sure you check that out on YouTube. Um, it's our episode on the Dr. Janine Show. You can just search my name, Dr. Janine Bowering, and search uh, sleep, and then you'll find that video there. We also also have a wonderful so I want you all if you have sleeping issues or you're stressed out you've got anxiety we have some beautiful binaural beats videos right now on YouTube and we continue to upload more and more just put them on so put your headphones on and ideally it's a wired headphone because you know I'm against the EMFs from you know devices and things but put on your wired headphones and listen and my favorite one is the dolphins so if you don't know I loved I don't know if you can see my dolphins back here yeah you'll always see like little you know snippets of dolphins are my favorite but very healing oh there they are um, very healing <laughs> energy that comes from from dolphins and so you'll see the whole visual so check out the the meditation it's a healing meditation I think it's just over an hour in length on YouTube that you, and that music that we actually um, worked on so I had a lot to do with the actual frequencies of the music of what went into that um, arrangement for the healing and to help you to sleep as well so that put on your headphones listen to that at bedtime it's a great thing that you can do as as you know things to be able to help you before we can get to a whole video on doing a night routine and question from Anne I take magnesium vitamin D3 vitamin C um, is it too much if you have one kidney? Will it do harm? Okay, so and yes, that is a fantastic question and I mean everybody's case is definitely individual and I can't give specific medical advice but um, again working with your practitioner making sure that they're whole food vitamins and taking the right amount um, you know I would need a lot more information to give a really good answer but taking the right amount and whole food that's something definitely that is definitely possible but you just want to you know make sure that you're doing it the right way with the right type of whole food supplements so um, yeah great question hello who who else do we have? Hello on TikTok. Is there a way to save this live? Ah, that's a great, it's my first time. Hello, I can't see what your name is. Um, yes, if, I'm not sure. On To be honest, here on TikTok, it's my first time doing a live TikTok, so this is an experiment for me as well. I'm not sure if we can save it. Um, definitely the entire show is going to be saved on YouTube, so just search my name, Dr. Janine Bowering, on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe. Click the bell so that you're notified whenever we do, you know, upload. We upload a new video every day, I think more or less every day now. Um, so, and give me a big thumbs up there, please. I'd appreciate I truly appreciate it because it really does help the channel um, the more views and the more shares so if you can please share the video as well but it will live on YouTube so we have archived this for YouTube so if you are you just tuned in we started at the top of the hour today at noon Eastern time so if you're just tuning in now on TikTok and and you loved you know some of what I was sharing or all of it uh, be sure you share it with your friends but it will be living on um, Facebook but also on YouTube so make sure that you and if you're on TikTok that you can just, you know, click the link is in my TikTok um, description. Just click my YouTube link there, then make sure that you're subscribed and please give me a big thumbs up because I really appreciate it and um, turn on your notifications. So make sure you click the bell so that you're notified when we're uploading um, our, our next show. So uh, we have to go. Oh my goodness. I could talk for on and on and on. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody who tuned in today. We are almost about to close up Flintstone 97 hello and welcome my first live TikTok so glad that you were here and you're a part of it so I hope uh, whoever how can I tone my body specific areas at home great question so some of the things that I do so I there's you know certain 
things that I do at home, especially with not being able to go to a gym. Sometimes it's too cold outside. So whenever you can exercise outside, it's the best thing to do. Um, certainly getting the fresh air, being connected to the earth. You don't want to wear rubber soled shoes. So try to find some way to, you know, still be grounded when you're exercising. I know it's difficult to find leather soled shoes. You can't always do that, but um, exercising certainly in the summertime is much easier here living in Canada anyway. I'm not sure where you're from, um, but you know, it's, it's important to, to get outside and to exercise. Now, when you're at home and in the cold winter months, like we are in Canada, then uh, to be honest, I, I stream in a yoga show either on my device, on my, on my iPad or my phone and I'll stream in a yoga show and yeah, I set up my room in a certain way which is to come. I'm going to share some of those hacks of lighting and what we do at, at, at our house at nighttime for to make sure that our circadian rhythms are all in sync. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I do. There's a ton on YouTube. So there's a ton of exercises. This is something that we're working on here at the Dr. Jadine show is we're going to put together some of the things that I do in terms of exercise. Um, we have some experts that are going to be chiming in uh, to be able to show you some of my own exercise routines and that's something that will live on YouTube as well so that you are able to see some healthy ways to exercise. Yes, with exercise you can certainly overdo it as well. So be sure that you're subscribed and yeah, turn on your notifications. So as we are adding more content to the channels wherever you're, you're tuning in, um, yeah, that you'll always get our newest uh, information and, and those uploads will have a whole playlist on YouTube as to like right now we have recipes and we have, you know, different um, playlist there but we'll have one all about exercise and some of the things that I found have helped with me after having you know four babies uh, myself it's important to you know keep myself toned and trim and I don't always eat as well as I should I do my best I'm I am pretty healthy I have to say but I've learned hacks over the years and whenever I can help especially other women and moms I mean if you're watching I know a lot of moms <laughs> that are on TikTok if you're watching hello give me a big wave I'd love to hear from you and and say say hello that you're here but uh, yeah whenever I can share the hacks that I've learned over the years and especially because of my geekiness and all the, the, the research that I do uh, to know what the science shows. But then if the science shows something and I'm like, okay, then I have to try it myself. And if it works, then great. If it doesn't, then I'll tell you that as well. So um, yeah, great questions that have come in. Hello. Uh, we'll subscribe on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you. I think your name is Pri Pri Priya. I can't see it totally. I'm so sorry. We're going to fix that for next time that I can actually see your names a lot better. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Ziggy Bhutan. Hello. Welcome. You're just tuning in, I think, right now at the end of the show. So we've just been live for an hour. We're going to do this every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So I'm not sure. I know you're coming in from a lot of, you know, different places around the world. And yeah, this is fantastic. That's what, what I love about social media is that, you know, I get to interact with so many of you. And Brayden, hello, uh, Pre, Prelia, 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 I think I got it right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining in, this is so awesome, thank you. Shout out, hello Nora, I think you're coming in on Facebook or YouTube, hello Nora, nice to see you as well. And yeah, thank you everyone, have a great day, thank you so much. So thanks everybody for joining my first live TikTok. We've been here at the Dr. Janine Show, as I said, every Monday I want you to join us and share the good news. Please share this with your friends and remember to always take care of your good health and to do it naturally. Thanks for joining me today.